Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. So, this is a follow-up video to my blog post on encrypting my entire home's internet uh, via an Ubuntu server in the cloud and my ASA 5505. So, you don't have to use an ASA 5505 for this. Could be any ASA or really any device that does IPsec. Could even be an iOS router for that sake. But you'd have to modify your configs on um, your iOS device to be similar to this. So if you know how to do an IPsec tunnel on an iOS device, you can apply this config there also. But I'm using a 5505 and I've mocked up um, a way to lab this out with viral so that I can show you without having to mess with my home gear uh, how this works. So basically I, I bought a, uh, an Ubuntu instance from a cloud provider called DigitalOcean. You don't have to use DigitalOcean, you can use anybody. They were just the first ones to pop up on my Google search. So for 10 bucks a month, I get an Ubuntu server in the cloud. And then I installed a piece of software called OpenSwan that allows it to be a IPsec endpoint for a land-to-land -land VPN. So this is a fresh Ubuntu install here. And uh, only thing I've done is install OpenSwan. You can see that open spawns already there. When you do the install, there's some prompts about X509 certificates. Um, just okay your way through them, creating a self-signed cert. Uh, and that's all you have to do there. The other thing that I like to do is I make a backup of ipsec.conf and ipsec secrets, and then I delete those files and recreate them brand new. Um, so that's where we're going to pick up is creating the ipsec.conf and ipsec.secrets so you can see the ipsec config in Ubuntu. Also, full disclosure, I have all of the commands for the Linux side of this config in Notepad just because I don't want to take the time to memorize them all. I, I, you know, I do this so rarely configuring OpenSwan that I just have the config saved in Evernote. So. We'll configure our ipsec.conf file first, then I'll talk a little bit about the important options in there. Let me just fix this line. There. All right, so important options inside of our ipsec.conf. So I have net traversal set to yes. Um, I don't actually need it set to yes because in my uh, the host instance that I have for DigitalOcean and in my lab environment, it's just a public IP dropped on a Linux server, so I don't, there's, there wouldn't be much NAT traversal uh, to worry about. And then even on my firewall, my firewall gets a DHCP address from the modem that's a public IP, so no NAT traversal happening. But I have it set to yes anyway. Um, and this is, uh, this is a pretty standard config that you'll find in the default, this config setup up here is part of the default ipsec.conf. So nothing changed there. And then this is the connection specific information right here. Uh, so the connection name, I just called it ASA demo. We see that we have our auth is set to um, secret, which is our pre-shared key. Key exchange is Ike, and then we have our Ike parameters. These are your phase one or um, IKE v1 policies on your ASA, saying that we're gonna use AES for encryption and SHA-1 for hash. Phase two is AES-128, SHA-1 for hash. We have PFS turned off. Type is tunnel. And then when you get to this left and right bit of config, I think, I like to think of left as local, right as remote, makes it simple and easy to remember what you're supposed to be specifying here. So our local addresses for this IPsec endpoint, let me get out of edit mode. Our local addresses are 200.11.254. So you see that specified as the left endpoint and left source IP. And that's just the public address on my Ubuntu server. And then the left subnet, since this is going to be hosting all of our internet traffic, we say left subnet is anything. Anything is interesting traffic. Um, left next hop, this is just saying how we're gonna reach the right side of the tunnel. And I'm saying to use the default route. Um, you don't really need that in there. That's going to be more pertinent if you have multiple interfaces um, and the next hop is something other than your default route. But I have it specified anyway. And then right or the remote end of the tunnel, the endpoint is set to 200.22.254. That's the outside address of my ASA in the lab. 
And then right subnets are 192.168.1.0, 192.168.2.0. .0. Those are the two subnets accessible from the inside of the firewall. So I'll write that file and jump out of it. The next one that we need is ipsec.secrets. That's where we share, store our pre-shared key. Um, the format of which I have right here. Let's pop that in. So we're saying that the pre-shared key for the connection of 200 to 200 So that's our left to right. Left to right. See, I organized that for you. The pre-shared key is Cisco123. The quotations are necessary and they are not part of the pre-shared key. You're saying everything inside the quotations is the pre-shared key. So we'll write that. And that's it for the IPsec config, if you can believe it. All I'm going to do now is restart IPsec. And it comes back up just fine. Normally, if there's an error with your syntax or you've typed something wrong, it'll drop it right there and tell you specifically what line of config is wrong. Otherwise, you'll just get an error. Um, and you can check your logs local to see. Um, check your logs to see if they're uh, to see what the IPsec is or OpenSwan's complaining about. But as you can see here, there was no complaints. OpenSwan restarted just fine, so we've loaded that. Other thing I'm going to do, uh, there's a bunch of different ways to configure masquerading in Linux. Uh, with Ubuntu, uh, I'm going to configure it with uh, UFW or the uncomplicated firewall. And that'll actually load um, my system controls and, um, and IP table rules for me. It just makes it a little bit easier. So if you're not going to use or Ubuntu for this, um, your mileage may vary. So you might have to uh, tinker around a little bit more to get forwarding to work and get uh, masquerading set up. But I'm not a super strong Linux guy, so I'm just going to use UFW, and I found this example um, out on the interwebs. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to modify this UFW file so that the default input policy, instead of being set to drop, is set to accept. And I've had like a hard time to register my keystrokes today. Set to accept. We're going to modify our system CTL file here. I know there's a Linux guy out there cringing when I say that because that can't be right. To let uh, to set the uh, IP forwarding enabled and our UFW rules that will get loaded into IP tables. Our before rules, just before we get to our filter rules, we're going to drop in our NAT config. So I'm saying that, you know, as the source comes in, 192.168.1.0 or 2.0, and the output interface is ETH1, we're going to masquerade as the interface. And that's our basic NAT config. And then I don't actually leave UFW running. Um, so I enable it, uh, or rather I, rather I disable it, which is probably already off. Then I enable it to load all my rules, then disable it again. All right, so forwarding should be set up properly, but we can't test it until the tunnel's up anyway. So I'll close this out and we'll get back to familiar territory over on the ASA. So here you can see my IP is 200.22.254. Um, my inside IP is 192.168.11. If I do a show routes, I can get to, actually, I don't think I have the route set up yet. Hold on. Route inside 192.168.2.0 to be accessible by 192.168. I think 1.10 is my, in my inside host. And then 2.10 as a test IP. Yep, okay. So I've got 192.168.1.0 and 2.0 is my local subnets that are gonna be marked for as interesting traffic. So we'll do the access list first. So we'll say we'll call IPsec ton all. And I'm going to permit 192 permit IP 192.168.1.0. To NE4 
same for 2.0, and that's our access list. And then we're going to say crypto, IKE v1, policy, we'll do 10, auth is pre shared. Encryption, we said, was AES. Hash is SHA. Now I'll do crypto IKE v1. We'll enable it on the outside interface. Then I'll set up my phase two policy. So crypto IPsec IKE v1 transform set. I'm just going to name it strong, even though it's not really. So ESP SHA HMAC ESP AES defaults 128. We'll set up our crypto map. Call it ton all. Make it my access list ready. Give it an ID of 10 because why not? I'll set my peer as 200.111.254, the public IP of our Ubuntu server. Crypto map ton all 10 will match address IPsec ton all. I'll set the transform set as strong. And then I'll tie this map up to the outside interface. Uh-oh, looks like I missed something. Crypto map has incomplete entries. What incomplete entries are you talking about? Have a transform set, you have a tie to interface. Is it not like the access list, maybe? We'll come back to that. So I don't think it has incomplete entries, even though it's telling me that it does. Yeah, the access list is set up right. Our peer. Okay, we'll come back to it. We'll set up our tunnel group of 200.11.254. The type is IPsec LAN to LAN. We'll do our IPsec attributes. IKE v1 pre shared key was Cisco 123. And that's it. So we don't want to do any NAT because the Ubuntu server is going to be doing NAT and I'll be looking for our, our source addresses of 192.168.1.1 or 1.0 or 2.0. So now I'm wondering if the tunnel will come up even though it said there were incomplete entries. Might have to do some troubleshooting. So let's just try and ping anything. Ah, I see what I did. Typo, so we'll say no tunnel, because the crypto map was called ton all. Ha, that's what I get. There we go. So let's retry that ping. We have a phase one. Looks like the ping is working now. That's actually a good test because the ping failed now that the tunnel's up we have. Successful ping. So we'll do a show crypto IPsec SA. We got four packets in cap, four decap. I'll repeat this ping. Should be up to nine now. We got nine. I'll source from my loopback, which is 192.168.2.10. That works just fine. There's our 2.0 going anywhere. So again, we'll do a show IP. You can see I'm 200.222.254. This is my fake internet, who's actually hosting the all eights address in the lab. I can type a password. Okay, so we'll do show IP int brief. You can see it's uh, loopback is 8888. So 
if the ASA is 200, 22254, if I tell that to 888 now, the um, internet switch here should see that as coming from the Ubuntu server if it's working. So we'll tell that to all eights. A password is Cisco. And then over here, just type W. Oh. Not you show users, that's what I'm thinking. If you show users, you can see this connection is coming from two one or two hundred one one two five four. The Ubuntu service of so masquerading is working, our tunneling is working, and the last bit of verification, since this is environment, we can do a packet capture. So I will do the capture on the link connecting uh, the Ubuntu server to our fake internet. Let me just jump off this. Uh, internet Ubuntu VPN. We'll get a quick packet capture. All right, so that's running. So we'll ping all eight to generate some traffic. I'll tell net to it, log off, and then let's download this capture and take a look. And the only traffic we should see from 200, 22, 254 should all be encrypted. IP.ADDR equal to equals 200 22254. And you can see everything is ESP encapsulated, and then we have some uh, some ISA camp here at the top for key exchange. All right, um, that's really about it. We have our masquerading set up, we have a land to land tunnel built between the ASA and uh, Ubuntu. I did promise I'd try and give it a side-by-side -side of some of the configs, so that's how I'll end it off. We can do show run crypto IKEV1. And you can see our policy 10 is set for AES and hash is SHA. And then if we cat our ipsec.conf file, that should match up just fine ipsec.com, there we go. So AES and SHA-1, right there. We do show run crypto ipsec. Our transform set is strong, which is ESP, AES, ESP, SHA, HBAC. Over here you can see our phase two algorithm, AES-128 and SHA. So that lines up just fine. The access list line up fine. And that's about all there is to it. Um, there are some verification commands that you can run on the Ubuntu side of things, but I mean, seeing as the tunnel's up on this side and you guys can see that, there's not much point running it over there. You can see I have our essays. Ah, heck, we'll do it anyway. Let's see if I can remember it. it. Should be IPsec auto dash dash status. And you can see that uh, you, we do have a tunnel established here and Here's our peer address, that's the ASA. And that's it, easy as pie, right? So all these configs are up on my blog and I'll link that in the video description. And guys, make sure to let me know if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover in future videos. As always, I hope